Designed with a clear vision of high tactical and strategic mobility, air defense, anti-tank capability, high survivability and protection in any terrain or tactical environment, meet a world-leading combat-capable infantry fighting vehicle. The Combat Vehicle 90 or CV-90 Agile and powerful in combat, the CV-90 IFV variant is at the core of the CV-90 family and integrates a wide range of weapon systems providing all target capability to land forces around the world. So how strong and effective are the CV-90 vehicles? CV-90, or called Stridesforden 90, STRF-90, is a highly tactical armored combat vehicle family developed in 1984 to the early 1990s to meet operational requirements of the Swedish Army. It was co-developed by Saab Bofors Dynamics and Haglunds, with Bofors responsible for the turret, armament, and final assembly, while Haglunds providing the chassis and armored hull. Base Systems Haglunds currently produces the entire vehicle. The vehicle first entered service in Sweden in 1993. The CV-90 family of vehicles provides unrivaled performance in the 20 to 35 ton class and has been used by national forces, the United Nations, and NATO in missions all over the world, including Afghanistan. The CV-90 family is available in a variety of configurations. CV-90 Mark Zero is the original CV-90 variant, also known as CV-9040. It is equipped with a Bofors 40mm cannon and is only used in Sweden. This vehicle, however, had a non-stabilized cannon making it unable to fire accurately as they moved. This IFV was also limited in its ability to fight at night. This is mainly because the CV-9040 was merely an early prototype of the family. Now the CV-90 series has been constantly improved, with newer models featuring stabilized cannons, improved sights, as well as increased fire control systems. They also come as export versions for international customers developed by Bay Systems, which includes CV-90 Mark I, CV-90 Mark II, CV-90 Mark III, and CV-90 Mark IV that will be discussed as followed. Number 1. CV-90 Mark I The next CV-90 variant, called the Mark I, was delivered to Norway. CV-90 Mark I won the Norwegian competition for a new IFV, beating out American Bradley, British Warrior, and Austro-Spanish Pizarro, or ULAN. The CV-90 Mark I had a newly designed two-man 30mm turret evolved from the 25mm turret. The CV-90 Mark I was the first IFV to have a high hit probability performance during suppression fire modes. Both while moving and against air targets, several improvements were made on the CV-90 Mark I over the original Swedish CV-90. These vehicles showed positive results during the trials on mobility, reliability, lethality, durability, ergonomics, and survivability. Number 2. CV-90 Mark II The CV-90 Mark II, or CV-9030, also known as the Grenader Tank 2000, is in service with the Swiss Army. The CV-9030 is outfitted with an ATK 30mm and 40mm Bushmaster II MK44 cannon, a Saab System UTAAS anti-aircraft sight, and a digital Haglunds vehicle control system, HVCS. HVCS includes a video network system with displays at each crew station, as well as a vehicle built-in test system. It can be upgraded with a battlefield management system and the Haglund's Defensive Aid Suite, HDAS. The vehicle turrets were built by Patria Haglund's, a joint venture company. Finland currently operates 57 Mark II vehicles and has purchased 42 extra vehicles out of a total requirement of 102. Number 3. CV-90 Mark III The Netherlands signed a contract in December 2004 for 184 CV-90 Mark III vehicles, or also known as CV-9035. They also had 8 CV-9035 instruction vehicles during that time. 
The vehicle was first used by the Dutch Army in December 2008. With the Netherlands Van Halter and Metal in charge of the turret assembly and integration, the deliveries were completed by 2011. The CV-9035 is outfitted with a Bushmaster III 3550 cannon, a Saab UTAAS fire control system with ammunition programmer, a rotating cupola with hunter-killer skills, and commander and gunner stabilized day-night sights with third-generation thermal cameras. These vehicles' MT-DNGS commander sights were developed by Thales Optronics. By utilizing a Claire Midwave 3 to 5 micron thermal camera and a UTAAS, which includes the Catherine XB Longwave 8 to 12 micron thermal camera. Moreover, the Mark III variant is fully equipped with a new armor package from ROG Land Systems that provides increased protection against top attack weapons and mines, as well as Haglund's Defensive Aid Suite, DAS, with laser warner and smoke grenades. Denmark also ordered 45 CV-9035 Mark III vehicles in December 2005. The first was delivered in October 2007 and the last in December 2009. They arrived in Afghanistan in March of 2010. Number 4. CV-90 Mark IV. The CV-90 Mark IV is the fifth generation CV-90 infantry fighting vehicle. With improved speed and handling on the battlefield, it is also the most recent variant in the CV-90 family. With the most power and an upgraded electronic architecture to support future growth. Therefore, the CV-90 Mark IV review in this section would be a bit longer. The Mark IV is the next evolution of the CV-90 concept. The CV-90 Mark IV builds on a proud legacy of best-in-class mobility and survivability lasting for more than two decades, bringing unrivaled technological capabilities and flexibility to today's complex battlefield. Motorized by an improved Scania engine, the Mark IV can boost up a power rating of 1,000 horsepower and an X300 heavy-duty transmission system. The gross vehicle weight rating is raised from 35 to 37 tons, giving users 2 tons additional payload without sacrificing vehicle agility while maintaining the same level of protection. Also, the CV-90 Mark IV's torsion bar suspension consists of seven dual rubber tire road wheels on each side, a drive sprocket at the front, and an idler at the rear, with no track return rollers. The vehicle includes a track tension adjusting system that allows the driver to adjust both tracks simultaneously without leaving his seat. Besides that, the Mark IV is available with SUSI rubber band tracks. SUSI rubber band tracks are lighter and quieter, providing increased range, reduced vibrations, and improved protection against fire and mine blasts. The CV-90 Mark IV can be outfitted with either a two-man turret or an unmanned weapon station. The two-man power-operated turret is made entirely of welded steel, with the commander seated on the left and the gunner on the right, and both crew members having a single-piece hatch cover that opens to the rear. Turret traverse and weapon elevation are all electric, with manual controls available and an emergency. Additionally, the vehicle is outfitted with a D-series modular turret that can be armed with a variety of armament, ranging from 30-40mm and 35-50mm automatic cannons to a 120mm smoothbore tank cannon. Furthermore, the turret can house the Spike LR or other anti-tank guided missile launchers, as well as a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun as the second armament. The coaxial machine gun on the CV-90 Mark IV is mounted to an independent pod on the left side of the turret. This weapon pod can be fitted with a 40mm automatic grenade launcher, a 7.62mm machine gun, or a laser weapon. On the other hand, two anti-tank missile launchers are stored under the armor on the right side of the turret and are elevated from the inside of the turret to perform fire operations. The storage box can be replaced to house an unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, or other observation or reconnaissance devices. At the front of the turret, eight smoke grenade dischargers are mounted under the armor on each side. 
The modernization of the CV-90 Mark IV also allows for the full realization of the base system's eye-fighting concept. Because of greatly improved situational awareness, the base systems assist the vehicle's crew in making decisions. This, therefore, maintains the crew's vigilance and endurance while ensuring the overall system's maximum efficiency. Eye fighting improves ergonomics, autonomy, extended reality, and remote control capabilities. This network can also be connected to the turret through the digital fire controls and a sensor. Everything in the CV-90 Mark IV was created in accordance with the most recent NGVA standard electronic architecture practices and NATO standards. NGVA is a NATO standardization agreement, STANAG 4754, based on open standards for the design and integration of multiple electronic subsystems on military vehicles that are controlled by a multifunction crew display and control unit. This architecture makes it possible to make better use of sensor signals. The data is processed in real time by AI artificial intelligence algorithms and fed to the crew using AR augmented reality technology. Overall, the CV-90 vehicles feature advanced stealth technology as well as the Vehicle Information Systems, VIS, an open and scalable electronic architecture crewed by three a commander, a driver, and a gunner, and can be fitted with up to eight soldiers. The vehicles can also integrate complementary systems such as the Battlefield Management System, Defensive Aid Suite, and Friend or Foe Identification. In addition, the CV-90 basic armor protects against 14.5mm armor-piercing rounds all around. Although frontal arc armor protection is classified, all models from CV-90 and later is believed to be capable of protecting against 30mm APF-SDS, armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding Sabbat ammunition. Currently, 15 CV-90 variants are already in service in seven countries. Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. As of January 2021, over 1,300 vehicles had been delivered. So do you think the CV-90 series, especially the Mark IV, can be unrivaled vehicles in the combat zone? Let us know what you think down in the comments below. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.